nice and easy. We have the right and the left atria. The oracles are the little flat parts in front. So if you pull it off and you look inside, if we could put our pointer inside here, that would make this the oracle. And down inside here, that would make this the oracle. From the front, you're looking for something that looks folded like this. It looks empty, so there's just a little bit of one there. That's all we can see of the oracles. The ventricles, right and left. The fossa ovalis is a depression. They never put it on that side, but you can see I what here. So in this red spot here, and I'll show you here as well. In some of the models, you can see it in the right atrium, so you can look for that. They want you to know the epicardium, which is the same thing as the visceral pericardium. So it's going to be this outermost layer. So when we actually look at the heart, I'm going to put it back together again. This would be the epicardium. That's the layer that's secreting cere um, serous fluid into the pericardial space. Down from that, we have the myocardium, the muscle layer, and then endocardium inside that you read about has all the, it's special so that it will repel all the formed elements in the blood so they don't stick on the wall of the heart or in the vessels. It's actually continuous with the blood vessels, so the same lining goes up and out through the aorta and the veins and the arteries and all that good stuff. Okay, the interventricular septum is the division between the right and the left side of the heart. The apex is the pointy part at the bottom. The base is up at the top where all these exit and enter. The only way to ask about that is to ask you whether the point that I'm pointing at is at the apex or the base of the heart. So as long as you remember the apex is the pointy part and the base is at the top, there's no tricky part to that question. Otherwise, you would name a thousand other things I have found from experience. Um, bicuspid and tricuspid valves. These are going to be these big white valves here that they put in. Tricuspid has the R in it, so it's on the right side of the heart. Bicuspid is on the left side of the heart. It's technically, they have different number of cusps, but from the models you can't tell. So most people like the tricuspid contains R for the right side. When we look at them, you can see it, they form all these cords near the bottom. Those are the chordae tendini. The papillary muscles are these big bulges here that extend up and attach to the bottom of those um, little cords so that they can pull on the muscle, the, the uh, valve and prevent it from prolapsing all the way into the aorta. Um, we then have the two semilunar valves. They are called that because each of the flaps looks like a half moon. And so they always are called the semilunar valve. And then the one that attaches to the pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. The one that attaches to the aorta is the aortic semilunar valve. So that means that this big guy here in red is the aorta. In general, the arteries are red, the um, veins are blue, but that's going to be wrong in which system? Pulmonary. Pulmonary. In the pulmonary trunk, it's the opposite of, and in the pulmonary system, it's the opposite of that. So here we have the pulmonary trunk branching off of these. We would have the pulmonary arteries going right and left. They're blue because it's deoxygenated. The pulmonary veins coming in at the back, this is what they look like from the front. If we look at the back of the heart, there are these two guys. Those are the pulmonary veins returning oxygenated heart to the left side and then bringing all that deoxygenated blood back to the heart after it's moved through the body. This is superior. And then at the bottom, the inferior vena cava. They just give a teeny little amount of it. And the way that I can tell it's supposed to be the inferior vena cava is that it's blue, reminding us that deoxygenated blood is coming back through that system. Okay, I'm going to skip over and do coronary circulation. The heart is the model, as we've I already mentioned, it's not perfect. We'll do the best job that we can. Okay. Um, we did anybody have an artery uh, a model where you could lift up um, the oracle on the left side? If not, we're screwed. Nope. Okay. So we if we all have the same model, then this is the best that we have. So. The first thing that they want you to know are the major coronary arteries. These are going to branch off the aorta as soon as it leaves to supply circulation to the heart. 
the heart is like a greedy little monster. It's going to take its own blood before it goes out. And we actually see, therefore, believe it or not, a decrease in oxygen content of the blood from the time it leaves the heart to once it passes the exit to the coronary arteries. It's a really brilliant little system. Now, you can see it. Thank you very much for bringing this a little bit better here. Maybe. You can see a little bit more of the branching, but we'll go ahead and use this one as our major one. This one in here is one of the coronary arteries that would come back and, and, and attach all the way. All the, the only thing you need to know for the coronary arteries is whether it's right or left. So which one would this be? Right. The right coronary artery. Now the left coronary artery would run underneath this auricle. The only thing we can see is this little piece of it over here. Once it branches like this, it's not the, the left coronary artery anymore. So it's just this one piece of it that we can see. Um, once it starts heading towards the back of the heart, we call that the circumflex artery as it goes around. Um, the right uh, coronary artery will branch and become the marginal. So this one down in here is the marginal artery. Then the other two that we have trace the interventricular septum. So this is the anterior uh, interventricular artery. And then if we flip this whole model over, this is the posterior. There should again usually be just one. They've branched it. So it will call any of this the posterior interventricular artery. Okay. The venous system, we're going to have um, small veins and great veins, but I think the only one they really need you to know is the great cardiac vein, which is the one that traces alongside the anterior interventricular artery. And then if we switch over, the middle cardiac vein, which runs right next to the posterior interventricular artery, so we'll say all of this is middle cardiac vein. All of it is going to dump into the coronary sinus here, number six at the back of the heart sinuses right expanded veins that can actually store blood for you so it allows large volumes of blood to be returned and dumped into the um, atria as needed that's it that's all